Hello everyone, I'm Johanna Carlina Roring and I'm currently taking an executive MBA program at IPNI International Business School and this is my man mapping video for corporate finance class. Please keep watching. Our corporate finance class was taught by a very talented professor. He has more than 35 years of balance, work experience in business and academia, and he's also have facilitated in hundreds of training and seminars, and he's also a finance professor and former dean at the International Business School, UPH, UMN, and etc. And he's also written uh, 35 books and 1,000 articles. In the very first week, we learned about goal of financial management. The first one is basic objectives. That includes profit and wealth maximization. The second one is operational objectives. And that includes timely availability of requisite finances, most effective utilization of finances, safety of investment, and growth of the enterprise. The third one, we have to look at the social objectives also, which is uh, timely payment of interest, wages, and taxes and payment of reasonable dividends fair settlement with suppliers and maintaining relations with financiers the fourth one is research objectives and researching into new and better sources of finances and we also learn about good corporate governance principles so you remember the word tariff t-a-r-i-f t stands uh, stands for transparency a for accountability, R for responsibility, I for independency, and F for fairness. And this will result in prudent management according to mandate given, sustainable performance improvement, better corporate image, and of course value creation. Another very important lesson is the four cornerstones of corporate finance. The first one is the four of value principle. Value is driven by returns on capital and growth and cash flows. And then there is conservation of value principle. You cannot create value by re rearranging claims on cash flows. And there is also best owner principle. That is a business value depends upon its owner's capabilities. And expectation treadmill principle. The more investors expect of your share price, the better you must perform to keep up. So the combination of growth, return on invested capital or ROIC and healthy cash flow drives value creation. For time value of money, receiving $1 today is worth more than $1 in the future due to opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost of receiving $1 in the future is the interest we could have earned if we had received the $1 sooner. If we can measure this opportunity cost, we can translate $1 today into its equivalent in the future or compounding. And we can also translate $1 in the future into its equivalent today or we call it discounting. Now let's talk about capital budgeting. Capital budgeting is a planning process for investment in long-term assets. So for example, if we are going to invest in a new building that costs 30 billion rupees, we need to know will that investment give added value or how much is the return and the risk. So decision-making criteria in capital budgeting will give us, uh, will help us to make decision whether to accept or reject a long-term investment proposal. So there is a few concepts in capital budgeting. The first one is estimate expected future cash flow and then evaluate the project based on capital budgeting evaluation criteria and then decide whether which project is good or bad. Two or more projects can be mutually exclusive which means that we need only to pick one good project. And then there's also the independent one where we can choose a few or one or more of the good, good project. There is a few methods when it comes to capital budgeting. The first one is payback period. How many years does it take to cover the initial investment? And 
Some other methods is the net present value or NPV, profitability index or PI, and internal rate of return or IRR. But the weakness when using the payback period method is that the payback period doesn't uh, consider the cash flows, the time value of money, and the required rate of return. Now, if we are using the um, two methods, net present value or IRR, the NPV assumes cash flow are reinvested at required rate of return. IRR assumes that cash flows are reinvested at IRR. So the conclusion is MPV is better method for project evaluation. In week 3, we learn about the framework of analysis. There's the fundamental of analysis that covers domestic and global economic analysis, industry analysis, and the company analysis. We also learn about the intrinsic value versus the market price. Intrinsic value or IV usually calculated by investor and basically it is a discounted future cash flow and market price or MP is the consensus value by market participants. So sometimes we have to make a decision. If the IV is higher than the MP, that means we can buy the stock. In this case also we call it uh, overvalue. And if the IV is lower than the market price or MP, we can sell or we can short sell. In this situation, we call it um, under under value. And if the IV equal to MP, that means we can hold the stock or we can price it fairly. Now, when it comes to see whether the company is healthy or not, we have to check the ratio analysis. So, uh, there's a few terms when it comes to ratio analysis, but I only pick a few that I think is really important for us to know. The first one is the liquidity ratio, which measures the ability of the firm to meet its short-term financial obligations. And there's also efficiency ratio, which provides basis for assessing how effectively the firm is using its resources to generate sales. And there is also, this one is very important, which is the profitability ratios, which me measures the overall effectiveness of the firm's management and there is two types of this actually is the uh, the profit in relation to sales and the profit in relation to investment in week four we talk about capital structure theory and in this theory there is these two Nobel prizes winners modigliani and miller mm they wrote an important paper in 1958 in which they proved that with tax deductibility of interest payments, the optimal capital structure is 100% debt. So they made an assumption of no transaction cost, no taxes, everyone has same information and borrowing rates, debt is riskless, debt does not affect operation. So we're gonna see the flat line. In capital structure, actually in the real world, firms attempt to balance the cost and benefits of debt to reach the optimal mix that maximizes the value of the firm. So the effect on cost of capital is, since debt is cheaper than equity, use of debt will initially lower the weighted average cost of capital. At high levels of debt, the weighted average cost of capital will increase as investors perceive the firm to be riskier. Another interesting topic that we discussed this week is the Sovereign Wealth Fund or SWF. It is a state-owned investment fund comprised of money generated by the government, often derived from a country surplus uh, reserves. So it provides benefits for a country's economy and its citizens and the funding can come from a variety of sources such as the trade surpluses, foreign currency operation and money uh, from privatization and etc. So it usually have a targeted purpose for the infrastructure development and technological development etc. And the problem that usually occur in this SWF is that there is actually numerous issue which is which includes strategic investment allocation issue or the unclear regulatory issue high cost of capital issue and even the good governance issue now the question is whether it is it is a solution or illusion 
Theoretically, it is a good alternative solution for the increasing debt ratio issue and the need for fund for infrastructure development. However, it is a, not a cheap source of capital. It high risk, high return, low risk, low return. So some issues must be handled carefully to move from illusion to solution. In week 5, we learn about dividend. So should publicly received companies pay dividend? Now, the dilemma here is that should the firm use retained earnings for financing profitable capital investment or paying dividends to stockholders? Financing profitable capital investment, if it return earnings for profitable investment, dividend yield will be zero, but the stock price will increase resulting in a higher capital gain. Now, if we pay dividends, stockholders receive an immediate cash reward for investing, but the capital gain will decrease since the cash is not invested with the firm. So, dividend policy really involves two decisions. How much of the firm's earnings should be distributed to shareholders as dividends and how much should be retained for capital investment? Now, foreign exchange market. Foreign exchange market allows currency to be exchanged in order to facilitate international trade or financial transactions. It has evolved from the gold standard to agreements on fixed exchange rate to a floating rate system. There is a few terms when it comes to foreign exchange transaction. There is spot market. Market for immediate exchange is known as the spot market. There's also interbank market. Trading between banks occurs in the bank interbank market. Within this market, brokers sometimes act as intermediaries. There is also forward market. Enables an MNC to lock in the exchange rate at which it will buy or sell a certain quantity of currency on a specified future date. Finally, we have arrived at the very last week of lecture. In this last week, we talk about stock repurchases and then we again talk about dividends. Stock repurchases methods are buy shares in the open market to a broker, buy a large block by negotiating the, the purchase with a large block uh, holder, usually institution, and tender offer, offer to pay a specific price to all current stock. Finally, we have ended the mind mapping video for corporate finance class and I would like to say thank you to you all for bearing with me all this week and thank you of course to our wonderful professor Roy Semble for teaching us with a lot of knowledge and experience. I hope we will see you again for the next lecture or the next class. Thank you, bye-bye.